Welcome back to the slippery sloppery fields here in Bruges. It is the XEUCF, the European Championship Finals, bringing you live action from the women's division. It is semi-final time. We have CUSB Shout the Cusp Italian side versus Valkyria from Sweden, who we saw but a few games ago on this live stream. The much shorter roster that has key stars can they find the energy in their legs i'm hannah pendlebury joined in the commentary pavilion this fine day by ali thomas and this is going to be one hecking game ali i really cannot wait we've had a couple of reshuffles in the women's division due to the pitches becoming very muddy so this is now i believe a quarter or a semi semi-final semi-final so winner of this game will advance to the coveted final spot they certainly will. And who will it be against? Well, we will bring you some information about that game as it develops. As Sarah Eklund goes for the bid. Doesn't manage to come away with it, but takes another couple of inches of dirt to, uh, to add to her splash pattern <laughs> on this white jersey. I never know wh when you have white if it's a, a good thing because then you can show that you've been laying out a lot, but then also it does gradually turn to brown as the game continues. It does indeed, and it goes a little bit see-through as we see Chesky there going up. Great match for Sarah Eklund. And now Kusp with their first opportunity to sneak away with this to get a break. Um, that one's going to be just a little bit too blady. So Valkyria as we sort out our commentary source, helping us get these names correct for you as we see Eklund, oh, nearly the bit there. A zony, no, just a saggy look off the handlers. Eklund immediately going up field again. You'll see a lot of action from Valkyria using this talented Swede. And of course, the Lithuanian component joining Valkyria to turn them into an outdoors from an indoors team. Of course, seeing drop that smile who bested them in the indoor championships in Denmark back in early 2020, I think, before I thought, I know. And that is a nice bit of work from Coldwell there, taking in the score, patient stuff from Valkyria, putting their first one on the board with a hold. That felt like a lot longer than 10 seconds, or was that just me? That's true, perhaps, perhaps a little bit of a slower store count, but um, I mean, that's what was called on the field, so it's got to be good. No, absolutely. I'm just, uh, given that sometimes uh, stall outs feel like they are on average about seven seconds, some players erring on the side of a fast count. Um, it's, uh, yeah, just an interesting uh, happenstance to see on the pitch. Well, it, maybe it's the fact that the patience and calmness of the Valkyrie offense was so so it's overpowering, it just seemed to slow down time for us all. <laughs> Very poetic, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right in that zone. The action here has been excellent. The I field mean. surface is a little bit less than ideal, but um, it's been very exciting. We just saw a spicy game against Puti versus Seskidistus in the mixed division. But of course, this is the women's division as we see Maria Chiara Frangipani coming into the centre of the field. Such a wonderful surname. Su do you have such a wonderful surname? Surname. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. And it's delightful to say. Very mm. sweet. So, oh, we see this isolated play for Greta Melega. And she opens up a huge backhand. Holman underneath it, though. Uh, so, Holmlog able to put the defensive pressure on. Melga had in the game of Shout versus Valkyria on the live stream previously. So this is a rematch from yeah. the rubber crumb game that was in completely different conditions yesterday. The wind is a lot less significant today. The drizzle is just minorly impacting this. So we saw Greta Melga not having the best game, but good to see her firing on more cylinders here for Kuzm Shout as we see what the D-line can do. Ekborg 
passes over to Robbins. Big fiery fake gets whacked in the face by her ponytail. <laughs> Beak having a little shoulder fake. High one, nice taken down by Molly Bird, ex Brit, previously playing for Manchester. Very, very nice individual. However, chatty and occasionally you chat to her and then she runs away mm. while you're not looking as a defender. Not a fan of that. Robbins with an extremely dirty shirt. Far side. And gets Frank. Back to Bird. Doesn't have the reset around. Could have taken it in Robbins, but would hand for it a little bit late. Ekborg, the dangerous defender. Back to Bird. Sideline starting to say, keep swinging. I agree. Holmlong coming in. You see a bit more attacking of the break side for Valkyria. Skuff doing a great job of switching around. And look how they've pushed back Valkyria. Big. Struggling to find many options. Holmlong going up the side. Oh, it's a hand block. Look at that. Defensive pressure and eventually just nothing in the way of options. And Frangipane has to dial it in. The only thing available is that upline. And what a read. Incredible reflexes as well to get a hand on that. You're seeing it on the replay now, just able to bat it out of the pitch and into the sideline. Yeah, Frangipane, Kiki getting the block. Oh. And that a scintillating grab. She almost face planted, but kept her feet. Borgi with the disc. Thinks about it, it's patient, but then throws a big high sky ball into the back of the end zone. But underneath it, Greta Melega uses her height to great effect. Who was that with the score, sorry? Greta Melega. She says in a very flowery fake Italian accent, if you are on this stream, we have a bit of <laughs> normally the Italians have the massive sideline. They have all their teams because Cusp is a huge club represented in three separate divisions here. So exciting to see a Cusp mixed team coming out of the Bologna side, just showing the strength because they have, they planned to bring 28 players, did Cusp shout. So they have enough for 28 players and to field a mixed team. The work that the coaches and the just, well, everyone involved in the Bologna program Shout out, great work. And they're not the only club being represented from Bologna, because I believe Disco Bolo is also from Bologna. So how they have so many people playing Frisbee in that one city, which is not a huge city in Italy, is what? absolutely mystifying to me. Can we get some research on what actually the, uh, what the population of Bologna is and see if we can work out the percentage of their population that is uh, represented here. But of course, the chaps La Forta are currently playing on the other live stream field, I believe. So uh, facts for you about Bologna, it has 390,000 inhabitants. 390,000, mm -hmm. But the, the larger metropolitan area is home to more than a million people. So uh, in, in, the general, in the general city, it's only 390,000, which is relatively small, only the seventh largest in Italy. Well, my, 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 they do love Frisbee down in Bologna as we see Eklund not able to take that one over the head of Liana Seibert. As we make sure no one's getting in our way in our little commentary pavilion, as I've now nicknamed it. Chesky is going to put up a big, beautiful throw. That is gorgeous. Rovang with the disc, pops it up. Goes immediately to the end zone. Rovang for the goal. Oh, yes. Very nice work. The give go beautifully done. And that's some very uh, classic offense, might I say, from Shout. Just that perfectly weighted huck almost to the end zone and then able to get free in that tight space. And was that Legala with the assist? I will take your word for that. Well, let's have a look at that one again. Has the Reigns now gotten excited? Indeed, it was the number 32, Legala. 
didn't see so much of uh, Horvang and Legala in the game against Valkyria on the live stream rubber crumb field. But as I say, the conditions were very different wind-wise. We're now starting to see more rain appearing here on the fields in Bruges. It is October. It happens. But uh, last time we saw the uh, European Championship finals, of course, Kusp were the champions. They got themselves a gold medal. Can they do the triple alley? Am I right in thinking that the last time they won, Yaka were not here? That's a good question. We need to find that one out. Because I believe the first time they won gold, Yaka were not there. So with Yaka here this tournament and um, having won their quarter, I believe they are playing uh, potentially Jinx on the other field. Well, we'll bring you uh, all of that, that information. Oh but no. at the moment, we're seeing Chris coming out with a zone look, which I think is quite intelligent. In the previous game where we saw... It's not Jinx on the other side, because we saw Jinx playing Valkyria. Valkyria managed uh, to sneak away with the win by just being clutch and tightening their lines towards the end of that game. But we did see Jinx throw a couple of zony looks against this Valkyria side. And it is that thing of they've got a small roster, they're feeling it in their legs. And whilst the zone plays into the hands of the smaller team, because you don't have to maybe sprint quite so much, it's making you throw more passes and trying to mentally tire you out. These players are so athletic, they're so good. They're not going to look tired at this stage. But what you might be able to do is just make them brain tired. Mm. I would even add to that that on a normal surface that would hold absolutely true, but in this mud bath that is getting deeper by the minute as the rain pours down, that is going to take its toll on even the most conditioned of legs. It is, and as our stream starts to pick up some more viewers, please do get involved in the comments. Are you here to cheer for Valkyria or for CUSB Shout? I mean, I'm sure you're watching both streams, obviously, because why wouldn't you? Wall to wall action from the pitchers here at the XEU CF 2021, and it is a block for the Italians, Gianna Pancotti, Marchesi. Czeski has to go for the around. Nice work. Pancotti points exactly where she wants to throw the disc. La Gala responds. Nice mark from Kundalita. <laughs> a little bit of hand slappy action, but puts herself out of position for the mark. And that is a lovely inside goal for Kusp. They're looking so strong right now, Hani. Really, really dominant. They're looking crisp. They're looking confident. And uh, Valkyria are going to need to make some kind of shift to get back in this game. Absolutely. Coming out strong with their powerful players on the field already. Cusp looking pretty handy, taking two breaks. But we did see in the game against Jinx, Valkyria coming out a little bit flat at the beginning of the game and then just punching their way through to make them, well, get themselves into this semi-final. Did you happen to see who that assist was? That's a good question, Ali. I believe it was La Gala. Because we saw Pancotti point. And then, yeah, there you go. Oh, no, La Gala. Has the disc. Unknown. Tell us in the comments <laughs> if you've got a better view than us. We're trying to get the uh, the full stats board functioning since we're in the semi-finals of this tournament. So pretty even distribution across the board for the Italians thus far, but obviously only the one point for Valkyria. So. They need to get this hold here as we see another zony look from the Italian side. Of course, this is the last game of today for both of these teams. It's the state of the fields 
a lot of the games here being cancelled. It is the extended European Championships. That is the thing. We have a lot of teams here on this field site. And a strange women's division of 17 teams. An absolute nightmare for the schedule writers. And made even worse by the condition of these pictures. Oh, just got a touch on that. I love that over the top, Terenzi Kaita. Kundalita moving it back. Now we see a melt to match defense. Eklund has Caldwell coming under in quite a lot of space, but Kundalita in the way prevents it. Caldwell now back under. Oh, and it's a big ripper from the hand of Nadia Nelnikova. She got the first assist, but doesn't pick up her second as she tries to hit Sara Eklund. That's got to be heartbreaking for Valkyria. It looks like they are really struggling with this Kuzp defense, not having a lot of options in that moment, aside from just putting it deep. And uh, Kuzp have another chance to extend their lead. Well, after the frustration of having to play all of the passes in the world against that zone, you can't really blame them for once they get their penetration through, just trying to make short work of it. Valkyria really need their offensive points to be as short as possible. They do not have anywhere near the depth of the Italian side. Big one sits and hangs, snaffled up by Sara Eklund. A costly error for Kusp here. Kundalita takes it in stride, pops it down to Sofia Eklund. Thinks about the pop. Nice coverage from Erika Marchesini. Eklund powers it through to Caldwell. Few yards to go. Varnaita, who I believe I kept miscuing and saying she wasn't the spirit captain, she is, but Sophia Eklund not able to knee slide her way to success as we see some of the Italians arriving on the far side. That must be the mixed team, maybe Red Shot, giving some love to the ladies of Shout and a timeout called. So. Big moment for Kusp here. He will be extending their lead to 4-1, which in this weather, trying to go on a D-roll is potentially that much harder given how hard it is to kind of have a clean offensive hold um, and then immediately uh, get on the D-train. Both teams are going to have to battle against the ele elements as well as each other. But perhaps just a moment for Cusp to kind of regain focus and s maybe even set up a uh, a long play. Maybe a handler going deep. Always love to see that. Oh, absolutely. You know, you centre the pass and then off you go straight to the end zone. I imagine Ali is a as a as a tall human. <laughs> you probably have the same feeling as me on that particular play. It's one of my faves. I am in. 100% agreement uh, on that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to give a personal shout out to John Kofi, who has just supplied myself and Ali with some delicious snacks after giving me all of the information that I needed to update commentary source with the names of his teammates. What a match. Follow John on social media. He does excellent photography work, one of our media stalwarts. But getting us back in action, Gaia Pancotti with the disc, excellent field position and a play. We've got a horizontal stack, but squidged to the sidelines. Anna Ceschi and Erika Marcassini in front. You can see the mud being streaked on the players' shirts and legs. The matchup of Ceschi and Eklund, very good one. Eklund on the attack. Marcassini now. Puts up nice grab from Lawley. Nice flat backhand. Oh, and it's a big visionary put. Kundalita caught sleeping, and it's a goal. Easy does it. Elena Adetto with the grab for Kuzp. I mean, there really is not much you can do about that as a defender, save from being that little bit tighter on the end zone. If, the th if they've beaten you to the break side and the throw goes up and it's that pinpoint, you, you, you just got to shrug and, and, and a pat your opponent on the back and say, that was really nice. Well, perhaps a little bit of tension in the uh, stride of Kundalita there as we saw a nice long shot of her. She did 
allow her matchup to get completely free of her. As you say, you've got to protect the open side, but you do need to still be cognizant of when your player has gone all the way the other way. Is that right? So another goal on the board for Shout. They are three breaks in a row, taking a commanding hold of this game. As we see Chesky there now putting her waterproofs on and running it across the field, allowing the other line to say, the Italians really believe in bringing numbers to a tournament. Ali, how do you feel about that? I have, uh, have my own opinions on uh, large rosters. Um, they are not favorable opinions. Um, but that does come from being on a team with several superstars. Um, and credit to them, they are fantastic players. But as a D-line cutter, when you're playing one point in four, one point in five, it's uh, that much harder to keep yourself warm physically and mentally. As we see an overshot from Cusp. No, I take it back, not from Cusp, from Valkyria, of course. <laughs> I couldn't tell from the, the lack of intensity of going to get that. Because we see an overshot oh. and an absolute hoof of it down. There's Great the intensity. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. It's <laughs> so, Valkyria with an opportunity again. Need the offensive hold here. Watching Kurs run away with it. Eklund. Kusp again using a zoni look to try and just stifle any of the movements for Valkyria. Very suffocating Italian zone, leaving very little space around the handlers for them to get the disc. A nice high one over the top. Eklund given all the trust and faith in the world. I would too, to be honest, mm. as she pops it to her sister. Swenkum. Rather long compression shorts for rather short shorts. Oh, a visionary put to Kundalita, sneaking it through. Cusp stay with the zone, but it's a nice grab. Fantastic adjustment for Lizelle Caldwell for the goal. And that's exactly the kind of play that we need to be seeing from Valkyria. They worked it patiently through the zone. They put up a couple of dicey shots, ones that could have gone either way. But um, in the end, they put the disc in the end zone. And that is what counts. I'm just looking on the field here, there's so many more CUSP players than there are <laughs> for Valkyria. You can really visibly see the difference. But uh, that was some smart stuff, finding the holes in the CUSP zone. It didn't get a chance to melt to match, but I think we'll probably see some uh, person defense next time CUSP come out with the disc. But first of all, Valkyria keeping their superstars on in need of a break. And you can just see the uh, Italian players on the far sideline regaling their uh, their fellow Bolognians, I assume, with a little bit of chanting and a little, little shuffling dance as well. <laughs> so as we allow the pitch mic and the uh, fans on the sidelines to get us G'd up we have a big pull from Sada Eklund, but it fades out of bounds. Oh, and that is a very ominous rumble of thunder in the background. Frisbee, of course, cannot be played in a thunderstorm. It is not safe. Hopefully that's moving away from us. It was one of the things I noticed when I, when I signed the Wooftuff waiver back in 2010. It's specifically on there, but unfortunately, Melega unable to take that one out of the air. Just a bit of a lack of focus. Would have been nice to see her go for two rather than one hand on that catch. Van Nijter pops it up in front of Mernikova. Already on the assist board once so far this match. Erwin Trout. Looks around, lacking in options. Great defense from the handler set. The foul is going to be called. A bit too much touch from Francesca Sorrenti. Matching up, but that was great smother cover from the Italians. There's been some really fiery defense from both these teams so far, which is exactly what you would expect in a women's semi final from teams of this caliber. Um, and it's incredible to see such tenacity from these women in these conditions. I mean, it's, it's admirable. 
I certainly wouldn't want to be on the pitch right now, trying to slip and slide my way around, covering literally the best female players in Europe. No, 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 definitely not. And uh, <laughs> so I was saying that uh, earlier this week I was in Sardinia covering the world Great Grandmasters Beach Ultimate Club Championships. You mean your beach holiday? My beach holiday and everybody else's beach holidays, to be fair. All the teams' beach holidays. Um, and uh, covering that very much uh, felt like I wanted to be playing in the kind of balmy 27 degrees. Um, and then coming here is a bit of a bit of a change. I'm very happy to be sitting here in our pavilion and uh, watching some frisbee. But props to our camera crew who are out and exposed in the elements. We love you guys so much. If you want to help support to buy waterproofing gear, get more coverage of more fields, more stable Wi-Fi, all the good stuff to try and help us bring you the best of the best in Ultimate Frisbee globally, not just in Europe, then you can become a patron of Ulti TV. More information on that later on, I'm sure. In this oh. stream, a big huck it and hope it's going to go a little bit too far, but just making sure gets tipped out by the number 19 and number 18. I think that's what well, probably one of the Scazzieri sisters <laughs> can be reliably depended upon to get these. Absolutely. But Irina and Sofia Scazzieri, 18 and 19. I do like that look from Irmantraut. They do have some very good um, and tall players uh, who can receive those kinds of discs in the end zone. But it looked like it was just maybe a couple of centimetres off the mark. And I think this call is going to be retracted. Uh, the turn will stand and Kusper will be on offence once more. Yeah, we saw quite a lot of those uh, high risk, high stall ones coming off to the likes of Eklund et al. Some amazing work from Molly Robbins and Joanna Larson, and who can forget Oda Holmlong in their previous game against Jinx. But Jinx weren't putting quite as much pressure on as Kusp Shout are right now. Ermin's out there under so much pressure, but look at that aggression. Van Knight's trying to claw the disc back. Milliger against Linda Ekbog. I really like that matchup. Looking forward to watching much more of it. Hopefully, we get much more of it. Nice looking at the inside. Has to go for the around. The very young Cecilia Scagliarini. And what a snag from Sorrenti. Goes all the way down into that pivot. What a flexible hip that lady has. And oh my goodness, expansive play. Just shy of the goal line. Scherzieri loses her footing but looks strong as ever. Oh, and just not quite enough around on that. Iliada Bonfante throws the disc into the ground. Looks like she got a face full of mud for her troubles. What I really like about these uh, crisp women is they don't look upfield for more than three or four seconds, and then they immediately look to their dump, and that's a sign of a really well-drilled, disciplined team. Well, they know their systems, and this is the thing. The Chris players do have a couple of extra hands on deck that have come from further afield than the lovely Bologna. So it is really important when you have international individuals coming in and, and being platted into your roster, you have to be disciplined. You have to know the style that you want to play, because otherwise you can have some slightly uh, unseemly moments. That's absolutely right, Hanny. But you would expect nothing less from a team of the calibre of Cusp to be able to integrate international pickups relatively seamlessly. Well, they've had a lot of experience doing it. Kundalita there, trying to get a cheeky snaffle block. But Greta Melega getting the disc. We've got both of the uh, Scazzieri sisters, actually. Then we see Irene coming under. Oh, no, no, I take that back. That's not Irene. That's Cecilia Scarriarini. But there we are. Sca Scazzieri trying to find her sister. Sofia unable to come down with that rather lackluster high floaty. A long limb of Ekborg reaching up. And Ekborg there <laughs> trying to get either of her resets to do something. She's going to have to launch it, and she does. Again, great pressure from the Kursk defensive line, just absolutely annihilating the Valkyria handler set. 
I feel like it is a symptom of this field that it can bring out the worst in certain teams because I, I've watched a couple of games on this field and they have been incredibly turny. And it's not the players, it's the field, it's the wind, it's the slight slope. I think it's probably a little bit of everything. Mm. We see a foul call there. Ekborg, as you say, long-limbed, catching a little bit too much of um, Scazzieri. And that looks like a fairly immediate contest, not much discussion. Um, well, you don't want us to have long discussions on this pitch. As we've said, the elements are not that fun to play in, but they're even worse to stand still in for a long period of time. That is very fair. I think I lost fair. the feeling in my toes probably about two games ago. <laughs> I'm very sorry to hear it, honey. We will try oh, and keep you fine. supplied with warm drinks. <laughs> well, the warm drinks have a different outcome. Oh. But that outcome of that hug as the entire pack downfield clusters under it. And who comes up with it? It is Sofia, no, not Sofia Eklund, the 27, Nadia Melnikova. I saw the seven on the shorts and I assumed. Nice work from the tall Valkyrian Ekborg saying, I would like to dump it. Please let me dump it. Is she gonna get stuck on no dump island? I feel like she isn't. Sara Eklund. See, I think that's a smart play here. As these guys, well, these players chat through the stall out call, because we've done such a great job of smothering the handlers, it's nice to see Eklund coming in, but that's what Valkyrie perhaps need to do more. They have to have more aggression, allowing their handlers to just bust out, even though obviously that's their role. All of the players on this field are pretty capable, although the D-line coming out hasn't always been the best at scoring for this Valkyria side. Um, so we've got a contested stall out coming in here. It, I dare to say it didn't look the... Uh, both players looked a little bit exasperated at certain points, um, but that is what the contest is for. Um, hopefully both players are still giving each other the benefit of the doubt. It did seem like she had the disc for quite a long time. It certainly did, and a big shot going up to Kundalita, but... Another stall out call, I think. Uh, well, I think the turn is going to... S well, it's a turnover yeah. regardless. It's just a case of what the field position is. There's going to be no call. Skeziani's going, nope, no call. And we see the uh, the infamous using the travel hand signal <laughs> as, a, as a play on call from Melaga there. <sighs> They should maybe just come up with a different travel hand signal at this point because everyone uses it for play on. Maybe it should be a foot signal. A foot signal. <laughs> just hold your leg in the air. And a timeout called by Cusp. And if you're like Conrad Schlaw, you can get your foot to your face. Ba a background in ballet, I think I heard. Indeed, a background in ballet. We know that the, uh, the viewers like to make comments about Conrad Schlaw's thighs. But let's keep it away from this stream, shall we? <laughs> but we do have on board Alice Meniger, perhaps a relation of Greta. So hello to you. She goes, die shout. And we've got some love for Valkyria. Who have we got supporting Valkyria on the stream? Uh, we've got Augustas Taralis. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. Uh, thank you very much, Alicia, for watching the stream. We appreciate your support. And I'm sure Shout appreciate your support as well. I imagine there are a lot of Italian players who have two windows open uh, at the same time as Cusp, uh, I believe, are taking on Gentle on the other pitch. I'll be honest, there are so many teams facing each other off at the moment. Oh no, sorry, Cusp are playing Ranala at 3.40 because everything in the schedule has now been changed. Um, <laughs> so do tune into that uh, later. Yaka will also play Dublin at 3.40 in the other women's semi-final uh, to determine who will play in the finals tomorrow. Indeed, so actually on the other pitch right now, the semi-final in the Open division is in fact Clapham Ultimate versus Gentle Open and that is Benji Rees and Christina Obermeyer on the call for that one. So uh, the Italians actually get it moved around so that perhaps oh. they can sideline. Big disc going up. Who's going to come up with it? 
absolutely nobody is going to go straight into the turf as we see the Valkyria side putting the pressure back on the Italians. They are not done yet. They are three breaks to the negative. But they're still well within their reach. Ekborg needs to stop making that hand signal. It makes it very obvious for the Italians that you're not comfortable throwing upfield and snaffling through, of course, Francesca Sorrenti immediately giving it to Bonfante who finds Greta Meliger completely uncovered in the end zone. I really have to say, Ali, I know it's important to communicate with your teammates, but the, uh, the level of urgency with which we are seeing suddenly Linda Ekborg pull her teammates in saying, I really need a reset. It, it just doesn't seem comfortable. It seems a little bit scared, which is the first time I've really seen her look uncomfortable on the field. The last game, she was so dominant. Yeah, potentially a little bit of fatigue creeping in. And there might also be the mental aspect of, you know, Cusp are the reigning champions. And it can be hard when you are playing against the reigning champions to separate um, that, that idea from the actual team and from the actual people. Um, so we have seen teams who you, you think earlier in the tournament, they're looking absolutely on form to take down some giant threat. And then they get there and you're like, who's this team? This is not the team I've been watching all weekend. Where, did, where, where have they gone? Can we have them back? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if we can have a comeback for Valkyria at the moment. The Italians looking very pretty indeed. Nice distribution of their scores because they've got such a deep roster. But Carmen Lagala and Greta Meliga currently leading for goals and assists. So Valkyria with mud all over their shirts, working tirelessly against the Cusp zone. Again, trying to grind down, get the mental fatigue out on these rather slippery fields. I think a violation was called, potentially a marking infraction is what she meant. Indeed, and if it doesn't get responded to, you can call the violation. Ah, yes, there we go. Happened so rarely, I had all but forgotten it. Coldwell, popping it back to Melnikova. It looks pretty happy overall, considering the frustration of having to play tirelessly against a zone when you've been pulling all of the duty for your team. Yeah. Let's see a little bit more feet movement from the marks. I know it's obviously a... Uh, Oh, <laughs> tell you what, that was not the right kind of foot movement that I meant. <laughs> More on the toes. It is hard to do on this slippery surface, but Giovanni there working tirelessly, but doing lots with the arms, not so much moving the feet. Sort of like stutting around, but it seems to be working out effectively for Cusp. Lots of small ball, jinky passes, but <laughs> nearly getting the block there. Eklund going up strong, great position. Seibert can't do anything about it. Passes to her sister, Sophia. Oh, <laughs> spicy fake. I almost saw that come out of the hand. And here, Van Nijter. Oh, who on earth was supposed to be marking Sophia Eklund considering the size alley of this Cusp Shout team? The fact that they had no sideline anywhere near that play. Yeah, not ideal in terms of a communication standpoint. Um, it does also look like a lot of the Italian players on the far sideline um, have since gone. So perhaps they may be relying a little bit on them, but hopefully they will split their sideline more efficiently. And we'll just see this again. Eklund just calling for it. Very much taking advantage of the curse for miscommunication. And what I was really stoked to see in that point um, was that Valkyria aggressively charging up the line. That's how they got most of their continuation, just up this near sideline. And uh, Kusp kind of leaving enough space in the cup to let that throw go. So if they're going to put that zone out again, potentially something for them to think about is uh, clamping down on any crashes. Again, that's a communication thing that the sideline can really help you with. So, ciao to our Cusp Shout fans viewing this live stream. 
And thank you, Ingeborg, for uh, giving the facts about why the schedule has been a little bit shifted here. But nice to have Katarina Hulazari on with us, who I think has played for... Well, I certainly recognize the name. Whether you played for Shout or not, please let us know, Katarina. But Greta Meliga, whose sister is watching at home, looking a little bit lost for options. This is nice defense from Valkyria. Can they get the block? Oh, yes, they can. Great stuff indeed. And a double D from Valkyria there. The disc smacked to the ground by two successive players. And Marianne de Hask with the block. Remember seeing her in their last game against Kuss. Really very dominant. A little bit less pitch time for her in the Jinx game. Maybe they were resting her, saving her for this moment. So Valkyria on the charge, yet to take a break in this game. This is the opportunity. Robbins, see the look on her face as she <laughs> makes that fake finds Ekborg. I like the different hand signal. She's saying go deep for me, but that is going to sail way out of bounds. You can see the conciliatory arm of Marianne de Hask going up, but um, not to be and a wasted opportunity really for Valkyria. A mm, little bit of discussion about whether there was some contact on the marks, but it looked like there was no call. And uh, yeah, Ekborg maybe just a bit tired. Again, when the disc is slippery, she does look, she does appear to be wearing, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's a golfing glove um, to help her with the grip, but uh, clearly not enough to keep that disc in bounds, sadly, for her and for Valkyria. So it's Gazzieri. Looking a little bit lost, but finds the reset. Frangipani. Oh, that's a really lovely disc into the path of Meliga. Oh, nearly the run through from Sofia Eklund. But this is good flow for Kuz. A big shot. Molly Robbins is trying to try and do everything. She just gets a piece and denies it. Let us get Sieri off the goal. But she has a call on the play for Hats. Looked clean from us, but we're quite far away. So we'll hopefully have a look at the replay here. Oh, I'm not sure about that as a foul call, personally. I think possibly a strip, because it looks a lot like Robbins was far enough away to have not made any contact with the hands. But what we really want is a freeze frame of the moment that she got the block. But um, but hey, I will allow the uh, players to have a chat about it. From where I'm looking, it very much looked like she made contact with the disc several, s you know, at least half a second. Um, well, that will be what Scazzieri did. Um, we, of course, do have a, a, an option for the players to come and have a look at our replays, uh, but it's going to be contested. Um, yeah, sometimes it can be hard to tell uh, in the heat of the moment whether it was a disc that hit your hand or a person. Um, I don't know. What, what do you think, chat? Let us know your thoughts, chat. But please be polite and also respectful at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do. We don't want any any undue shade thrown in this women's semi-final game. Kusp looking dominant. We see Melaga going high against Ekborg. Frangipani. Oh, saucy inside shot. The goal for Francesca Sorrenti. The disc was beautiful. Lovely inside put. So that's got a sting for the Valkyria side. They had an opportunity to go within one um, after an incredible bid from Robbins. Um, but they are now at six versus three. It's Definitely an achievable battle. Um, in fact, we saw Love able to come back and tie it up at sixes earlier today uh, against Yaka. Um, Yaka then going on to take that game in the end. But, you know, teams have come back from uh, bigger deficits and Valkyria certainly have the potential to do so. I think potential is a very interesting word at this juncture. Because potentially... 
I mean, yeah, we could see Valkyria come through, but let's think about the experience that they've had. It's hard out here mm. on these fields. It's slippy and slidey. You can't really make your cuts in the same fashion you normally would. There's a drain on the Valkyrian side, and they have, what, maybe a full line less than their opponents? And that's not the first time this has happened. These two teams have met before, and we saw Valkyria desperately trying to fight for that extra game off. Shout got the bye by advancing out of their pool straight into power pools without having to play that extra match. So right now, Valkyria must be feeling it in their legs at least a little bit. Yes, I think that's really crucial, especially uh, as we've mentioned with that shorter roster. But we see Barbora Condalita nearly missed the catch there, making sure just instead. Varnaita has picked up a nice big mud patch recently. That's uh, a new one to her. Eklund. Popping it back to Van Nijt. Looking, surveying the options. Putting the arounds. Oh, oh, that's a great grab. Nilnikova making a hero of herself. And then Eklund popping and going. Popping and locking, but Kaz, she got the keys to the door to the next goal for Valkyria. She does indeed, it's Kundalita for days, a low catch, perhaps a call. So chat with uh, Anna Chesky, I'm really enjoying the Chesky Eklund matchup. Chesky, one of the most talented defenders in the women's game, got the, I believe the European Defender of the Year award back in 2019 after her performances for Kuss, but also the Italian national women's team. And the goal is signaled as Eklund oh. and Chesky will continue to ch have a little chat. But uh, if you want to get your eyeballs on a incredible women's game, highly recommend the German women's versus Italian women's game from Jure, that 2019 squads, where we saw the Germans not quite advance as They'd hoped, and of course, speaking of Germans and many of the teams, but players that represented on that national team, they were knocked out by Valkyria this morning when they beat Jinx quite handily in the end after going down initially. So maybe we'll have a similar situation here with Valkyria having gone down, able to claw their way back. But it's a big ask against a cusp team that look like they really, really want to win this game and make finals again. And in these conditions, wanting it is, I would argue, more important than when it's a lovely sunny day. Oh, absolutely. So the D-line from Valkyria needs to come up with the goods. Italians looking pretty darn good right now. Frangipani, center of the field. Finds Scazzieri. Such a titan in this Kurs Shout team. Scazzieri. Bonfante nicely covered. Having to go for Melega. Big arm coming out to sandwiching Valkyrie defenders, Scazzieri with the bid, but she can't quite make it magic. It's difficult with this pitch. It does slope down. It's kind of raised in the middle, which means that a throw, which you think is the perfect height, actually by the time it and the player gets to the end zone, is just slightly too high or slightly too far. But what an absolutely heroic bid we're seeing here. Absolutely perfect form, legs up, lands on her chest, and then pops straight up again to play D. And popping up like a little gopher out of the mud bath is Sada Eklund. And again, we're seeing great work. Perhaps a little bit of sagging off. Oh my goodness, lots of contact there in that. But again, Linda Ekborg lifting a little bit lost and a turnover coming off of the pass she makes. Well, technically that is a foul that happened uh, after the play, which should be, as we're seeing here, she gets bumped into and uh, falls to the floor, um, which if it is an uncontested foul, should mean that Valkyria retained possession. However, 
that looks like there's going to be a bit of pushback from Cusp. Well, I suppose it's the, the question of obviously the, the block comes from the defender that gets there in the fair fight. So I, d I, well, I suppose it, it, I can't quite see if um, Scazzieri, if there would have been contact if Frangipane hadn't actually sort of pushed the two together anyway. But um, but it's a difficult one. I, I would be happy to see this one go back to the last neutral point. But um, what I'm also delighted for is that we have three brand new patrons to the Patreon Ulti TV supporter group. So we have August Eidevard. So hopefully I've pronounced your name correctly, August. Moritz Hartig has also pledged some cash and Robin Jacobi. So if you want to throw some money at us, throw money, throw money, please do. This stream is brought to you live publicly on YouTube. Will it be available to watch back at your viewing pleasure? All because of the work of Ulti TV bringing you this ex-EUCF 2021 all weekend long. Set yourself up, become a patron of Ultimate Arts. And what do you buy, Ali, the person who has, the ultimate player who has everything? Why? It's an Ulti TV Patreon subscription <laughs> from as little as one euro or pound or local currency per month. And an injury call there. You see Cecilia Scagliarini putting the disc on the floor. Nasty. Ooh. Stumble there. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that doesn't look comfortable. Yeah, we'll see it again. Um, her ankle. Oh, gosh. She just sat straight down on her leg. Yeah. Yeah, in this mud, it is so hard to land safely, it really is. And whilst we're devastated that so many of the games have had to be cancelled here at the Fields in Bruges, that is exactly why. Tomorrow's finals day will still go ahead because we are able to play on the rubber crumb, but I'm pretty sure it's possible those are the only games that are going to happen here at the field site in Bruges. Oh. Big one going over the top. An ambitious bid from Francesca Sorrenti trying to get that one down, but not to be. And Valkyria given a relatively short field round about the brick mark. Ekborg. Sorry, I take that back. That's Saskia. Not Saskia Beek. Holmlong. Holmlong opening up the arm. Robbins. Oh, she puts a visionary pot. And again, Valkyria catching Kurs sleeping. It's like they've got some, uh, just a little bit of chloroform that they're releasing <laughs> in the back of the end zone, just to make Kurs a little bit sleepy. And then they're just slowly walking their way, completely isolated into the space. I, uh, I very much think that might be against the woof of rules, uh, slowly <laughs> drugging your opponents with chloroform. Um, <laughs> that we have to say allegedly, <laughs> that is what they are doing. But does it does it work if it's not? Like, I don't know how chloroform works. I've never used it, and I hope I never will. <laughs> that's exactly what someone who uses chloroform would say, though, honey. <laughs> that's what they would say. But a great shot for. Valkyria and a much needed one, Ali. We are chasing down the end of this first half. We've had the one break back. That was that was a break. That was a break. So they held their last point. They have broken. This is somewhat a mirror or beginning to mirror the comeback that Love had against Yaka. So I'm hoping we will see uh, an equally Barn burnerous game. <laughs> <laughs> barn burnerous or barn stormerous? Um, do we want to burn the barn or storm it? I think we can probably do both, but we have to do them in the right order. Storm it, then burn it. Yes. <laughs> I think that makes sense. <laughs> I don't think you can st uh, storm a pile of ashes somehow. <laughs> so <laughs> we're seeing the O line coming out for Cusp again. Sorrenti. Pancotti, Gaia coming back on. Nice to see her. I think that's Leona Seibert, the number 26. Oh my goodness, what a huge redemption play for Cusp in the right place at the right times. Cecilia Scagliarini, oh, that was a flobbly wobbly disc, but Greta Meliga manages to get her big palms around it. Pancotti, back to Meliga. Seibert. 
think an Austrian, if I recall, a big one from Creta Melaga, and it's taken down by the teeny tiny Francesca Sorrenti under big pressure from Valkyria. I have to say, Ali, Melaga has been throwing some big old shots, and not all of them have been making me feel comfortable sat here calling this game. Some of them have made me feel deeply uncomfortable, <laughs> but in a good way. I, uh, I think her team would probably agree with you there. Um, yeah, she, she certainly has the vision and she certainly has the daring to be putting up some of these shots. There's clearly a lot of trust in her receivers, as we can see uh, Francesca Sorrenti um, surrounded by two much taller Valkyria players, but able to get the read and go up and get the disc. Yeah. Um, it looks like a timeout is going to be called. I don't like that timeout. Editor Ermansfeldt there trying to... Uh, snack away the disc on that replay but the tactical timeout calling for Valkyria is really important they just had a clean hold from their opponents but they're starting to perhaps get themselves back into this game they didn't manage to go on a break run but they're quite happy I think to just nibble away at the lead that Chris Shout have at the moment it was a weird moment in the previous matchup against Jinx where the scorekeepers actually had the half at seven. So we'll double check that this is a timeout rather than a half. A half. So they're currently being shown. So Sean Colford, a golfer, with the update, we do indeed have a rather curious calling of half time on the field in front of us. So, um, oh. Is it the 45-minute half cap? Oh, there's a half cap now. That's news. Uh, yes, I think it's been very rarely used since most games have been getting to eight beforehand. Um, but yes, so I presume the half cap is is at 45 minutes. We had the, the and then you play to to you know point add one. Um, so it must have just gone during the last point and we didn't notice. Well, there we go. This game has been such a battle out here on the field that we are enacting. Well, new rules. I say new rules, obviously. Clearly, that's what happened with the previous game. But Valkyria managing to hold off shout. But we are... So we're now into the second half of this game. And, uh, yeah, we're nearly an hour expired on the clock. It does not feel like it's been an hour. <laughs> it does not indeed, Ali. Although, I have to say, I was hoping I could know when the half was so I could see if I could sneak away and uh, deal with some things I have to deal with because I'm getting quite excited by this game. And I also <laughs> haven't left this chair in the past... So this will be nearly four and a half hours. What a professional and what commitment from Hanny Pendlebury, everybody. Well, we'll see how we go. I'm going to see how this next point goes. If I feel like I can tear myself away from the action, who knows? We might have some reinforcements sat right next to us. But we've got the D-line of Valkyria. This is very important. We're now officially coming out into the second half. The game against Jinx, they didn't have quite the deficit that we see before us for Valkyria, but they were behind. And the second half is where they were like, you know what, it's business time. I have my business socks on and I'm keeping them on because this is where it all matters. Valkyria coming into the finals at the European Indoor Championships way back when, before we even knew what COVID was. Mm. Those, Those were the were days. The days. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're, they're in the other purple. <laughs> So Frangipani in the center of the field surveying the options to say the European runners up for indoors looking to get themselves a berth into the final for outdoors. But it's a sail over the top of Melaga. But gr again, the Cusp players just in the right spaces at the right time to back each other up. S and Scazzieri with the redemption. Frangipani making sure. Double gloved look. Oh, look at that saucy inside. But again, it's sailing over the intended target, but they're just backing each other. Scagliarini with the redemption this time. Everything falling into the laps of Bologna. Frangipani. 
another inside, oh. but finally it comes good. One too many of the same throw and it's picked off. I think that's Van Naito with the block. Yeah, it seemed like there were three throws in a row from Bologna, which were just not on target. And that time, nobody there for backup. Send for help, send for backup. Because it is all happening here. Saskia Bick pops through to Xborg. Oh, but a miscue. Molly Bird, the number 55, unable to get her paws around it. That's some real bad luck. And sometimes when the disc is wet and slippery, it is just, you know, there's nothing more you can do. Everything is too wet and you cannot catch it. Well, a short field opportunity. Frangipane thinks about the inside, but last time it did get read very well. Melega coming out. Oh, sits low in the pivot. Oh, nearly, look at it. And is that just enough to confuse the intended target? Yes, it is. Cecilia Scagliarini cannot come up with the goods. Yeah, and great uh, effort from Scagliarini to, you know, and we've seen this from Shout again and again. They will go to ground. They will put their bodies on the line, um, but just not able to come up with it that time, unfortunately. And we see that familiar Linda Eckboard bringing it in. Oh. And the block is incredible. <laughs> so Kundalita getting a little bit schooled there. And again, Chris looking to put the next one on the board. Mm. Bit of contact there, but seems more of a fair fight. Clean enough. Greta Melega getting perhaps a little bit too much. I think that's, uh, is that Robbins there? Yeah. You can hear some pump up music behind us. Want more and more. People just want more and more of this game. We have Ungert Frank with the disc. Big high one underneath it. Oh, <sighs> nearly Molly Robbins with the redemption. Hero grab on her knees, but just miscues from Valkyria. Oh, has a little look at that. Saskia Beak feeling a bit hungry. Maybe they didn't feed her before this game, so she get <laughs> snaffle blocks. So oh. a timeout called, and I'm going to take a break, but I'll leave you with the capable Ali and Sean. <laughs> All right, we'll be hearing back from Hanny Pendleberry very shortly. So as we have a look at these two teams, I am joined uh, in the booth by the wonderful Sean Colfer. How are you doing today, Sean? I'm doing very well, thank you. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work. To cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. So you're going to show replays now, or? Uh, right, so uh, was slightly unexpected commercial there, sorry everybody. Um, so I think just before uh, the offense is set up, we're going to have a look at some of the replays uh, from this game. So it's earlier in the point at uh, pass, saved by Kursp, one of two that sailed over the intended receiver's head. Yeah, it seems like Ku's been getting a little bit lucky on this particular point. There was also a really, really late stall I.O. that was blocked. And then Valkyria just not able to get a hand on a pass that kind of did what the Ku's passes did. Sailed over someone's head, but couldn't quite mm. get the backup on it. But time out for Ku's, and uh, they're going to be focusing on trying to get this hold and send us to half, not half. I'm really surprised that not that many players are wearing gloves. I suppose it's the advantages of catching it better versus the disadvantages of not being as comfortable throwing in a glove unless you really practice it. That's a nice bladey throw. Is that a catch? No, it's a ground strip. And the time over strikes again. But Valkyria blocked. What an incredible heads up block by Scatterini. And 
Crisp have a very short field turn and a chance to extend their lead to three points. Yeah, there's a reason why Irene Scassieri is one of the best cutters and one of the best players in Europe and shows it again there with a fantastic heads-up play. Oh, incredible bid from Molly Robbins. I think size the ankles out. <laughs> nice break round. Looks for the continuation isn't coming. Looks for the open throw and a nice inside, but it's going to go over the head once again. But it is caught by the number 19, Sofia Scazzieri. And Kusp have yet another point on the board. Another situation there where Kuz getting a little bit lucky, definitely intended receiver, but just manages to get in there and bring down the throw amid a mess of bodies. So a three-point lead, but I think Kuz can really be looking at this and thinking they're getting a little bit fortunate here, Ali. Yes, and it's got to be heartbreaking uh, for Valkyria, knowing that they're sort of really doing everything that they possibly can, and yet things just aren't going their way. They're not being in the right place at the right time to get those Ds in the same way that Kuzbar uh, to kind of get the, the leftovers um, of these slightly dicey IO shots. You can see there on the replay, Molly Bird exasperated just outside of her reach, can't quite get there to get the block, and it's reeled in by Sophia Scazzieri. Yes, sorry, Molly Bird, not Molly Robbins. Although a Robin is a bird. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. So Valkyria, as the rain is starting to come down even more heavily, on this lumpy and soggy pitch. Getting some nice unders, the rest of the team filtering through, a little bit of give go with Sarah Eklund and Liesl Caldwell dumps it back. Renata Varaneta looking to the middle, but it's taken away by Cusp, who immediately get it moving very quickly, keeping the stall count low and a big blady shot up to space. And it will remain in space. There is a foul on the throw and an uncontested foul at that. So it will go back and Gaia Pancotti will have another chance um, to get the offense moving. A well. shot out to space like a satellite on a rocket, but left in space to become space junk, <laughs> clogging up the space around the earth. <laughs> It's a real problem, Ali. We didn't think about this future proofing. I'm back. I've been uh, enjoying the live stream on a slight delay watching you while I was running back and forth. <laughs> but I'm pleased to say I now have the feeling back in my ankles and toes. I'm so glad for you, honey, and welcome back. We did miss you for the moments that we were, you were away. Well, as you said, I heard it. A big shot going up from Crisp. Valkyria trying everything they possibly can to deny the Italians, but they are just juggernauting out in front in this stage of the game. And look at that piece of offensive work. Smooth, fresh, and so clean, clean. Uh, I mean, that is some pretty classic and textbook offense. Just uh, well-timed cut from the stack onto the open side, making it very easy for Gaia Pancotti and Hella Rorvang just able to snaffle that one up. And Kuzp extending their lead. Valkyria not looking to have any of the answers to the questions that Kuzp is asking. Yes, indeed. Hella Rorvang, the Dane. Quite a few Danish pickups in this women's division. Vika Knudsen on Jaka. And of course, we're expecting uh, perhaps the Yaka will be the ones facing up against Kusp in the final. That was what a lot of people had put in for their picks in the picks contest to try and earn themselves an Ulti World subscription. Mm. But it's been a pretty easy ride for both of those teams. They got the top of their pools earlier on in the tournament, advanced into the power pools with that extra buy. As I say, faced up against Valkyria early on in the tournament. And now we see the rematch going a little bit differently, but thankfully very differently due to the difference in conditions. Interesting switching off from the Cusp Shout zone defense. Starting to again try and take away some of the mental game. Kundalita very isolated in the space on the near side of the field towards our commentary pavilion. Do you see Davide Mori behind 
Eklund there. Another titan of the European Ultimate scene for Eklund in front because she's way more important right now. <laughs> Davide Mori, all he can do is shout and scream from the sideline, but Eklund can go out and get blocks and blocks. She will, but right now, the name of the game is trying to penetrate through this Italian zone. Oh, and there goes the block. Horvang with it. The Danish addition. With two goals already on the board. Gets the big block from the zone. So I'm expecting to see another very smooth and clean hold uh, for Cusp. And of course, if you'd like to know a bit more about the background of the teams in Bologna, uh, there is a feature length documentary on the LTTV YouTube channel all about the background of Ultimate in that city. I'm talking about backgrounds, that's a heck of a backhand, but this one finally a bit of luck for Valkyria as it just plays ping pong off of all of the possible reception, well, receivers in the end zone. Yeah, so the commentator's curse uh, always strikes again. I was expecting a, just a clean, clean score, but uh, the conditions had other ideas. But I did get to put in a very nice segue. So <laughs> what's really to wind whinge about, for me anyway? <laughs> Sophia Eklund working it round the back, the number 47, beautifully with Renata Varneiter. Hopefully I'm doing that one right. Shout out to Joanna Larson for giving me some tips on how to pronounce these names ahead of this game. Didn't have a chance to re-listen, but uh, Chesky there with the heads up play as the disc tips off the fingers of Sarah Eklund. Chesky. Looking around, this is nice from Valkyria, putting on some of their own handler pressure, but just about sneaks it out. I think there might be a foul call there between the two players. Babore Kundalita not liking just how much, but uh, signaling the goal, they're just going to have a chat about it. Seems that Chesky is involved in quite a few of these discussions where the goal is called good, but uh, they just want to have a chat about the marking situation and the aggression with which the Italians are throwing through those marks. Yeah, it does seem like... Um it is a stereotype of Italian ultimate that it is uh, potentially a little bit more physical. You can see she gives her a little bit of a bump on the mark as she as she comes round. Um, and that is Carmen Lagala with the score. I don't think we've, we've said her name much, but then again, this team is so deep that there are several players who I imagine have not been uh, playing for very many points in this game thus far. Well... With a 21 deep roster, it's difficult to get as much field time as you might want. Mm. And the Italians actually were expecting on having 28. They had a full, I think it's, yeah, full seven <laughs> injuries. So we're missing the likes of Laura Falolfi, of course, mm. the talisman of the Cusp Shout team and the Italian women's scene in general. We talked earlier about the... Uh, I think it was a quarter-final game against the German women's team back in Gyur in 2019. Farofi and Chesky were very, very pivotal in that game in the late stages as they rode that comeback train. But unfortunately, Farofi then got herself injured. And without her at the helm, things seemed to sort of come a little bit undone. But Cusp having that true depth here to show that even without their, you know, their Euro star, they didn't need her. But they did have a good joke, Ali, of giving uh, Farolfi a BB gun so she could, as she was coaching them, because she has been coaching them this weekend, <laughs> um, so she could shoot them when they're not doing what she wants them to do. And that hammer doing exactly what Valkyria wanted it to do and floating over this crisp zone. You love to see it. They're an indoors team. This is what they're best at. I think maybe this point's been about let's have a bit more fun. Oh, yes, another hammer over the top. This is the way that Valkyria need to play. Have they found the magic, Ali? I hope it is not too little too late. But, yeah, those high floaty discs and spicy overheads certainly seem to be making mincemeat of this zone. Oh, and oh. Sarah Eklund with the layout goal. That was one heckin' point, Ali. The score might be 10-5, but... In my heart, it should be much closer. If only they'd started playing that way a little bit sooner. Look at the flair. I mean, I cannot wait to see this on the replay. That was just too 
pinpoint perfect hammers with just the right amount of float and then some lovely round uh not breaks but lovely uh bladey kind of throws and then a layout just to put the icing on the cake there look at this just getting so much air keeping the disc firmly in both of her hands <laughs> she hits the ground and then the celebration you love to see it you do indeed that is the Sarah Eklund that we know and love she's so got herself quite a few uh, stats on the board currently uh, but quite spread out across uh, across the both teams, which is very nice to see. You don't have one or two players really dominating the pitch, or at least not that they are reflected in the stats. So tuning in from around the world, we've got some Adelaide love, we've got some Perth love, some Malmö, Sweden. Hello to Frida. Nice to have you with us, buddy. As we see the Italians chasing down another goal but a drop from Greta Meliga no cool all clean just one of those things but I bet you she will now try her very bestest to get the disc back as her matchup of older oh sorry Oda Honlong Valkyria now oh it's another spicy high one it's asking a lot of Sada Eklund she's got two Italians next to her and just enough of the tip of the disc and um, is that indeed Melaga with the block I think it is it looked like uh, Eklund was trying to dive over her receiver and um or not the receiver rather but yeah we'll see it there uh <laughs> not a difficult catch to make she might have made it had there not been a cusp in the way yeah, perhaps if Melaga hadn't lost her own footing, maybe if the pitch was slightly less slippery, slidey, muddy. Robin's trying her best to put all the pressure she can on. Didn't have the ability, no channel to make a bid there. Panjapani going up the line. Look at the smothering coverage of the handlers there. And it's going to be knocked out of the air. Doesn't quite work, but I'm really enjoying how Valkyria have managed to find some Allen keys and they're turning the screws, matching up against the handlers of Cusp, giving them a taste of their own medicine. I couldn't agree more. And I think it's almost um, ironic that now potentially some of the pressure is off because they're four points down. Some of them might be saying to themselves, well, we're not going to win this game, but at least we're going to play as best as we can. Oh, so Ali, if you think that's the case, you've never met a Swedish women's player. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit I have not had the pleasure. Well, hopefully we will after this game. Oh, my goodness. Look at the separation. Gorgeous put from Molly Robbins into the hands and a give go for Linda Ekborg. The score. And that is nice stuff. A break at long last for Valkyria. And that was some beautiful give go little dishes into the end zone uh, from the two Valkyria players there. And um, yeah, is, is that a break? That is a break. It is a break. Gosh, who to thank it? They are not going down yet. Down but not out of Valkyria. Don't underestimate them when they really want to go for it. Marwan, Alal, Alal Janini. How, how are we going to try and pronounce this, Ali? You, I've, I've just massacred it. Do you want to have a better go than me? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I tried, Alajini. and my tongue had a seizure. So I think <laughs> we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll leave that one. <laughs> we'll go with me, Alal Janini. Thank you very much for, for joining us on this live stream. The action is spicy hot. She said, let's go Valkyria. So we've got some love in the comments for both sides. As we would hope. Oh, as, as you'd expect. So Hormlong with the pull. That is a very nice pull indeed. Sits and hangs. Gives them almost all the time to get that there. The Anna Seibert with the disc. It's some fetching purple long sleeves. Oh, big attack from Molly Robbins. Scazzieri, big high disc. Oh, oh, what a ripper of a grab. Anna Czeski, you absolute legend. <laughs> she has no right getting up that high. Absolutely not. Gonna have a stall out called Homlung says, you held on to this for a very long time. 
butter. An immediate, immediate contest from Chesky. Just uh, shaking her head and very much not agreeing with the perspective of the Valkyria player. No, but it's just, just fine. Yeah, no, and just having a lot of um, quickly contested calls in this game, let's say. Well, both pl both teams really want it. Both teams are, um, you know, we're fighting tooth and nail just because Cusp have the, you know, the lead at the moment. It's, you know, this is do or die, right? This is for Euro European Championship medal guaranteed position. Guaranteeing yourself on the podium, you know? It's, as much as like psychology says, it's better to to come third than it is to come second because, you know, at least in a 3-4, in a you're winning the game. But right now, they won't be thinking about that. We see an action replay, <laughs> exactly the same throw to exactly the same person. Cecilia Scagliarini reels in a goal for Shout, and that makes it 11 to seven. Three break deficit for Valkyria. But that was the O-line for Cusp, and that looked really difficult for them. Yes, Valkyria definitely not making it easy. And um, I know we're not really meant to uh, to come down either way, but I think some of these contests that uh, that Cusp have been... I can think of two calls in this game, of which I am not a fan. Um, I may be the only one. And uh, Bologna does have a bit of a reputation for uh, historically not the best spirit, especially their men's team who received um, a bit of a, a bit of a warning in years past. If you want to know more about that and the Bolognian opinion uh, on that historical event, be sure to check out the documentary. As I mentioned, it's on the Alta TV YouTube channel. It's a real deep dive into the history of Ultimate in Bologna and what makes them such an ultimate powerhouse in Europe. Oh, we see more of this hammer time. Barbora Kundalita taking a lot of contact there from La Scala. I'm not a fan of that, but she plays through it like a champion. Nice work from Valkyria now. Completely exploded the curve zone there, having to recover, melting themselves to match. Eklund working beautifully with Varnaite. Varnaite. Looking in front, Kundalita again. La Scala trying everything she can to prevent the Lithuanian Eurostar from coming up with the goods. It's a big arcing backhand across the field. Eklund to Eklund. It's goal! And we are starting to reach the last few points of this game. We've had almost 90 minutes there's going to be five minutes until the soft cap goes and we will play uh, finish out that point and then add one to the highest score play to that so valkyria are running out of time to catch up to cusp but if they keep playing like that they may well be able to and just watching it again i'm loving so much how Valkyria have suddenly remembered, oh wait, we know how to break through this. Ah. We love to play indoors. We love overheads. This is our jam. We got this. And you know what? If they keep playing with that confidence and keep putting that pressure on the O-line for Cusp, we could yet see them come back into this. We really, really could. And I think something that is potentially helping um, the Swedish players is that though it is raining quite a lot, there is barely any wind whatsoever. So though the, the spicy throws are potentially a little bit more difficult to catch, and Valtteri have been coming down with them regardless, um, those hammers and overhead throws and blades are able to fly exactly as the thrower intends them to. They certainly are, and they know exactly how to throw them, but that's exactly not how you catch a disc frangipani with a costly error and valuable field position. Striding up to the disc, Renata Varnaita.
87 minutes by our time clock. We're not merged with the volunteer scorekeepers who are doing an excellent job. Stood out in the rain on the far side of the field. But Ali, do you think there's enough time for Valkyria to, when we get to the time cap going on, is there enough time for them to make up this gap, make up the distance? I think it very much, d it will, I think, literally come down to the second, whether the whistle goes uh, just before a point is scored or just after a point is scored, just minimizing the number of points that Valkyria need to make up. But it looks as though Cusp may try and put another one in before that 90 minute mark is reached. Well, such a capable team, such a beautiful O-line, and it is good. Anna Cheski doing a double helping of greatness in that far side to put themselves still a notch above Valkyria after that storm ahead in both the first and the second halves. Four unanswered goals taking us from one nothing in favor of Val uh, Valkyria to four one in favor of Kursp. And then again, after that timed half time, a three point drop. We are starting to see some energy coming out of Valkyria. They're calling a timeout, give their stars a little bit of rest time as the wind and the rain start to pick up. I think it also there is an element of potentially running the clock down and uh, making it so that that time cap, I think should be going uh, within the next two minutes or so, um, not allowing uh, Kusp uh, to get that many points. So for example, uh, if, Valkyria, if the time cap goes and Valkyria score, it will be game to 13, which would mean only three, well, I say only, it's a lot, but three goals for them to try and make up um, in this 100 minute time slot. But that was kind of, I think, the point I was trying to get at earlier, was that once the time cap on, you have to stop shout from scoring at all. Once the time cap's on, it's game to 13. Unless Cusp extend their lead, in which case it's game to 14. And that's even worse. Yeah. This is my point. It's, it's, is this, as you called it earlier, perhaps a little too late? Not that you said it was, but you asked the question. And that's the question I'm asking of Valkyria right now. If they put this one in, I think it's doable. It's definitely doable. We've seen teams come back. I can think of the absolute storm of a mix game uh, yesterday uh, with Goya Toya and the Mainz Arena where uh, Goya Toya were down 11-14 uh, and managed to score four in a row to take the win at 15. And that's a beautiful flick to Barbora Kundalita, but it's a little bit too low, weirdly enough. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you want to throw low if you're an indoor this side team, but Sophia Eklund has absolute position. Rabaglia, and it's a goal. Can't do anything about it. Great effort, though, from Nadia Malnikova, throwing herself all the way around to try and prevent that score. But it is, well, we'll double check. I get the suspicion it may well be game to 13. But at the moment, Cusp with their foot on the pedal. It's theirs to lose at this point. Yeah, so according to our clock and uh, on the stream and also um, just just the time, that should now be uh, game to 14 unless they have extended these semi-finals, but I have not heard anything about that. So um. well, we did see the last game go pretty much down to the wire. So there was a slight delay on this one. However, we're going to have to come up with a secret signal, I feel, Ali. Tomorrow's games, we will speak to the scorekeepers and we'll have a secret signal that they will do a special whistle just for us so that we know <laughs> when the time cap has been applied. 
and we'll, you know, it's, it's, it's nice though. It's nice to have that communication, that banter with the scorekeepers. And thank you so much to all the volunteer, all the tournament organizing staff who've been absolutely fantastic so far this tournament, adapting, helping like hammer in all of the tents. We've got a, uh, one of the tournament organizers currently snuck in behind us to watch this women's semi-final who was sauntering around the field site on the first day with a large mallet looking very in charge. <laughs> a mallet? Can you guess who that was, Ali? Uh, I'm not sure I can. He's behind you. It's Boris van der Look. Ah. <laughs> but focusing back on the action on the field, Valkyria with the disc. Oh, cheeky scuba fake. Love a bit of that. Eklund to Caldwell. Back to Eklund. Oh, trying to get up in the mixer goes Gaia Pancotti. But this is smooth and flow offense. Oh, no. Commentator's curse. Barbara Kundalita throws behind Sarah Eklund. She's good, but she's not, well, she's not inhuman. But that's a low one from Chesky that's going to be picked off by Mel Nikova. Eklund around, oh. nice grab from the 62, Renznikaita. Working through some of these connections, giving some of their stars a bit of a rest. Coldwell, oh, but just a little bit of a lazy catch there. Unfortunate for Sophia Eklund. And we have charging forth Kisp. La well, I say that. Just as some gets in my back of my throat. Sara Rabaglia not able to reel that one in on the far side. Just a bit too much juice. Yeah, I think uh, the end of game fatigue is definitely starting to creep into both these teams. We're seeing some kind of uh, inattentive catches, some throws, which definitely half an hour ago would have been finding their targets. And oh, oh my word. That is beautiful, oh. but it's not going to be caught. Sarah Eklund, just as you say, that little bit of mental exhaustion. It's got to be exhaustion at this stage for Valkyria. I think actually, contrary to your point, Ali, I think some of the Kuss players have been off the field for too long. Ah. We're starting to see them use all of their roster. Oh my goodness, Czeski cannot make that play. Nearly, I think, to be honest, she maybe stopped tracking it when she saw how good the position was, but sneaking into the backfield, La Scala takes it away from the intended target of Lesnikaita. Not quite enough power on that huck to sneak all the way into the deep space. Chesky far sideline now surveys it, throws the flick, has separation. Oh my goodness, it's a sliding grab. The number seven, Erika Marcassini with the goal for Cusp Shout and they put themselves. We have, Ali, a 15 point game. So to, as in game to 15. Do you think Valkyria can keep Kuss quiet for a whole six points? My gut says if Valkyria had played as well as they'd played the point before this one, absolutely yes, I would have backed them to do it and I would have rooted for them all the way. However, having seen that last point, I think it is too big of an ask for Valkyria. I hate to say it because I'm really enjoying suddenly Valkyria remembering who they are and throwing those saucy dishes all over the place. But unfortunately, that last point, as you say, a couple of them clattered to the floor and smashed everywhere. It's such a shame to see it. It's just a little bit too little fire, a little bit too late in the game. But having said that, who knows? Stranger things have happened on oh, an ultimate course. field. And if this one goes down to the wire, if we ended up in universe, I mean, I think I probably have to. Uh, I'm glad I've got the next game slot off. That's all I'll say, Ali. So, Melnikova across to Van Leiter. Oh, no, sorry. Eklund. Now it's Van Leiter. A sort of poachy defense around the handler set. Perhaps a bit of the old FSU. Hammer over the top. This is nice. Good confidence. Van Leiter working hard for Eklund in the middle. Just about getting the little jink. Big one going over the top and coming through La Scala. Getting the block for Cusp. Oh, La Gala even. La Scala? I don't know why I said La Scala. <laughs> is that a restaurant in London? <laughs> Probably. 
Ana Diaz, who absolutely stole the disc over the pack. Oh, that could possibly be a golden shot for goal. And it is. Kusk put themselves. Potentially. There we go. <laughs> Just a little pause there to make us all have a moment. But there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Cusp take themselves into the final of the women's division. They are going to be able to defend their championship title from the last European Championships many, many moons ago. Credit to Valkyria, though. Ali, how well did they play in the latter stages of the game? Absolutely amazingly, and it's always so incredible to see um, the top tier teams with their different playing styles, the spicy overheads from Valkyria, the great skies, awesome playing, um, but just on this occasion, not able to edge out a very well-drilled well and confident-looking shout. Yeah, we knew they were the underdogs coming in, but as you say, Cusp will advance, looking very handed at the end. So that's it for this game, but stick your eyes like with super glue or gorilla, whatever glue you want to do. Many brands are available and all of them are pretty bad to get stuck on your fingers. However, on this pitch, next game slot, we have Cusp, no, not Cusp out. We have Dublin Gravity versus Yaka. I believe. I Yes, we do. I've had it confirmed. Benjamin Rees will be taking over the reins and guiding you through that one with the lovely Ali Thomas. Ali, it's been a pleasure to call this game with you. I'm going to go take a break, but I'm going to sit right by the sideline. Do not go anywhere. Walter wall coverage with you here. It's semi-final action. We'll be back real soon. See you then. Oh. My darling, once you've recovered... Um, would you mind bringing me some tea or <laughs> finding someone who could bring me tea? This is also ideal because we're also going to use this uh, setup for the finals tomorrow. So we're going to make this one What? No, no, this is the setup. Okay. Yeah. No way! <laughs> yeah, way. So, retract everything I said. <laughs> okay, down okay, one. Everyone. Oh, man. Okay. Two seconds. Duff. 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 Duff.